These are the five Sony full-frame lenses that I want to see the most in 2023. Now, a few years ago, 2019 actually, I made a video about the five Sony lenses I wanted to see, and it turns out that Sony delivered on three of the five lenses that I wanted. Those were the 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master, the 35 millimeter F1.8, and the 135 millimeter F1.8 G Master lenses. All of those lenses are some of the best ones available for the system today, but they have come such a long way with their lens tech. So I wanted to reimagine this list and update it. And who knows, maybe we'll see even more of my wish list come to the market this time around. Hey, really quick before we continue, a really fast disclaimer here. I am a Sony ambassador. I'm a Sony artisan of imagery. However, this video has nothing to do with Sony beyond just giving my opinion on the lenses that I would like to see in the future. I don't know if any of these lenses are ever gonna make it to the market. And if they don't, we already have a lot of great lenses as it is. But this is kind of my wish list, and I wanted to share it all with you publicly. And like I said, who knows, maybe we'll see some of these in the future. Just sharing my opinion, okay? Let's get into it. The first lens I want to see in 2023 could actually be any one of three different 85 millimeter lenses. So I'm really trying to cover all of the bases here, but each of these lenses would be so different and awesome in their own way. The first one is an 85 millimeter F 1.2 G Master lens. This was actually one of the lenses that I requested in 2019 in that video, and it's making an appearance in this video for several reasons. For me, that 85 millimeter focal length is such a sweet spot for portraiture. There's been times where I've gone out and I've used an 85 mil lens as my only lens for an entire session, and I never felt like I was missing out on anything. Sony ended up making the 50 millimeter F1.2 and did something that really surprised me. First, they made it surprisingly small, but more importantly, the performance at F1.2 is super good. Some of the older F1.2 lenses that I used back in the DSLR days would give you nice looking bokeh, but getting your subjects to be sharp was such a headache. And on the rare occasion that you'd actually get them in focus, it was likely the shot where they didn't have the best expression. The F1.2 G Master gives you that beautiful bokeh, but doesn't sacrifice the autofocus performance. And it's because of my experience with that lens that I wanted to see an 85 millimeter F1.2 lens that much more. I think that lens would be great for wedding photographers, portrait photographers, pretty much anyone that is taking photos of people and that F1.2 aperture will give those bokeh lovers something to enjoy, as well as giving low light photographers a really powerful option in their camera bag. That's the 85 millimeter lens that I wanna see the most, but I think there is room for two more 85 millimeter lenses in the lineup. Recently, Sony came out with a 50 millimeter F1.4 G Master lens that I really love, and they took it in a different direction than the F1.2 version. Sony made the F1.4 version to be closer to the size of two of their other prime lenses, the 24 millimeter and 35 millimeter G Master lenses. They all have the same front filter thread size and are so close in size and weight that you could mount any of those lenses on a gimbal for video shooting. And you may not have to rebalance it to swap out the lenses in that group. Now, this might be dreaming a little bit, but I don't claim to know the physics of it and how this would work, but could you imagine if they were to make an 85 millimeter F1.4 lens in that same lineup? Basically take the design of these F1.4 lenses and extend it to 85 millimeters so that you could choose from a 24, 35, 50, or 85 millimeter with a wide aperture that's the smallest and most compact lens in their category. Now this last 85 millimeter lens is one that I think would sell like crazy and it's inspired by another trio of lenses. This time the trio of travel primes that came out a few years ago. Sony released the 24 millimeter, 40 and 50 millimeter G series lenses. And it got me thinking how small could they make an 85 millimeter lens if it had something like an F2 or F2.5 aperture. If Sony made an ultra compact 85 millimeter travel lens, I could see it being a great complement for those smaller cameras like the A7C or the ZV-E1. There's a lot of potential in that travel prime lens category. 
And being that 85 millimeter is one of my favorite focal lengths, I know I would welcome that lens into my camera kit and into my world, even if the other 85 millimeter lenses that I just talked about actually made it into production. All right, this next lens is kind of a dream lens for me as a portrait photographer, and it would likely be the most expensive lens in today's list, but that is the 200 millimeter F1.8 G Master lens. If you haven't taken portraits on the long end of a lens, then I think you're missing out. You may not understand how awesome a lens like this could be, but for those who have, need I actually say more? The compression and subject isolation that you would get when you're taking portraits at 200 millimeters wide open at f1.8 would lead to some of the most bokehlicious images of all time. Y'all know I'm not a huge bokeh guy. I like my portraits sharp, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that this lens would be the one to convert me. Sony has been killing it with their lens technology lately, so if they manage to make the most compact version of this kind of lens, listen, it's not one that I think everyone out there would buy, but for those that do, they're definitely going to get images that will stand apart from everyone else. The look it would provide would be so unique, and because of that, I think the premium lens buyers out there would seriously give it a look. Several years ago, Sony came out with a 70 to 200 millimeter F4 G series lens. And while I knew a lot of people that they really loved the lens due to it being so light, it just wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, for me, the F2.8 G Master was so good, I was willing to muscle up and use that lens so that I could enjoy the optical quality that it provided. Given how good Sony's lens motors and optics have gotten in recent years and the miniaturization of their lenses, I think it's time for a version two makeover. Version one was already great in terms of the size and the weight, but just like they did with version two of their F2.8 lens, I think that there might just be an opportunity there to shave off a few grams, add some faster performance linear motors, and of course, bring some of their new lens coatings. There's always going to be a market for lightweight lenses and the 70 to 200 millimeter focal range is probably one of the most important categories of lenses that would benefit from that. I'm curious though, do you own the 70 to 200 millimeter F4 lens from Sony? Let me know in the comments if you love the lens and specifically why you love it. And who knows, maybe we'll see an update for this in the future. After watching my video from 2019, there was a lens that I wanted that hasn't come out yet, but I still want it really bad, but with a few tweaks. I would love to see a 100 millimeter F2 macro lens with G Master Optics. Now I read the comments of all of my videos and I remember back then people were saying that a lens like that wasn't necessary mainly because the 90 millimeter F2.8 G series macro was already so good. I own the lens and I agree, it's definitely the best macro lens that I've ever used. And I continue to use it almost every single week to shoot my product videos and for my beauty portraits. But I couldn't help but think that Sony could still bring even more improvements to it, given how good their recent releases have been. In that video, I wanted the new lens to also be a 90 millimeter lens, but maybe the right way to go would be to make a 100 millimeter focal length instead. The additional 10 millimeters worth of compression would come in handy for headshots and for portrait work, and it would still work great for close-up macro stuff as well. People are already used to taking macro shots at 100 millimeters, so maybe it would be different enough from the 90 to where it could occupy that higher tier macro lens in the lineup. All I'm saying is that with these new high resolution cameras like the A7R5 and the A1 out there, I'm all for having a lens that gives you that next level of sharpness and detail. And that's what I would hope a 100 millimeter G Master Macro would deliver on. I struggled with this next lens on my list because it's one that is currently available on the market from a third party. But unfortunately, that other lens just didn't deliver on the things that I really, really wanted. I know that Sony could deliver on making this kind of lens really special, and that's a 105 millimeter F1.4 lens. My issues with the ones that are currently available is that if you're coming from some of Sony's latest lenses, like the 50 millimeter 1.4, the 
135 millimeter f1.8, you would see that they are more than capable of not only giving you a fast aperture, but also giving you really solid autofocus performance. With the third party option that's available right now, I really wanted to love it, but when I went out and I did an entire session, I found that only 65% of the shots that I took wide open were actually like clinically sharp and in focus. And that was a deal breaker for me. On Sony's G and G Master lenses, it's such a rarity that I miss focus that I'm probably kind of spoiled at this point in terms of how a lens should perform. But how awesome would it be if you could get a 105 millimeter lens that gives you reliable and fast autofocus paired up with a shallow depth of field? There's likely an opportunity there to make it more compact and lighter than the ones that are currently available on the market as well. So it's sort of a dream lens for me. Speaking of dream lenses, I'm curious to know what are the full frame lenses that you would like to see from Sony in 2023? Let's talk about that in the comment section. With so many lenses in Sony's E-mount ecosystem, there's really not that many out there that aren't already available. But I know the community that watches my content are some of the smartest and the brightest that are out there. So let's hear your ideas. Subscribe if you haven't already, as I have new videos coming out very, very soon. And here's one that you may have missed that I think you'll enjoy. Check it out and I'll see you there.